Hey guys, you read the title to the video, let's get straight into it, starting with Chi Chi. Chi Chi lost her way and trespassed into the realm of the Adepti. Sadly, she ended up injuring her right leg and decided to rest inside a cave. While bandaging her wound, she ended up getting caught up in the crossfire between demons and Adepti. And well, she ended up dying in the clash. So before Chi Chi died, this is what her thoughts were. She was missing her family, she was super lonely, she didn't want to die. <laughs> of course. But the most important thing was that she wished she could freeze time and stop what was about to happen. And in that moment, she received her vision. Now the Adepti were feeling pretty bad for what happened, and they couldn't just let an innocent child die. So they each gave her a portion of their strength and it ended up bringing her back to life. Only problem was that she ended up going berserk and Mountain Shaper had no choice but to seal her in amber where she was trapped forever between life and death. A few hundred years passed and our avatar Chi Chi was found by some humans who wanted to bring her to the Wangshan funeral parlor. Chi Chi not wanting to go there escaped her amber running away and ran into Baizu who she now works for. Venti and Zongli are part of the seven archons which means they don't really need a vision just like the traveler because they already have great power. Venti actually made a fake vision just to blend in with freedom and its only purpose is to actually to turn into a liar. Now, Albedo's kind of a chad when it comes to receiving his vision. He wasn't even surprised when he got it. He barely even felt a wave of an emotion, and after giving it a glance, he went back to carrying on with what he was doing before. When Ningguang first saw her vision, she thought it would be a great idea to put it on sale. Ningguang started writing plans to auction it off, if you can believe it. Smiling at the riches she would gain, and in that moment, light shone forth from her vision. Ningguang's smile froze, and her mistress congratulated her on awakening her vision, but Ning was annoyed about it. All official one was a friend to hang out with, and then Oz actually suddenly appeared, with her vision in hand. Seeing Cho, his story doesn't actually say where he got his vision from, but it does say that he's a genius of his clan and that he wrote a book about visions and weapons being extensions of your own body. Xin Yen wanted more people in Liyue to understand how awesome rock and roll is, but since Liyue had no rock and roll, it wasn't like it was going to be the easiest of things she could do. So what she ended up doing was practicing a ton to try and improve her skills, but she got a lot of Rotten Tomato reviews and that started to get to her. She started to wonder if she should quit, but she didn't really want to run away from giving up her passion. After reaffirming her resolve, she practiced many times on the top of Mount Tianghang with explosions and sparks burning her fingers or instruments up. With all of her passion and hard work, she actually ended up receiving her vision and dashed down the mountain for her first rock and roll concert in Liyue Harbor. Now, I've already said how Beidou's gotten her vision before, but for those who don't know, she killed a god tier monster, the kind that Zhong Li had to fight in all the legendary stories, without a vision. And so yeah, you can see she's a pretty badass character. And well, after she killed the monster, then her vision appeared. As Zhongling has said before, you can make something super delicious out of any kind of ingredient. And this is actually what earned Zhongling the approval of a vision by shouldering this ideal in a wholehearted and unreserved manner. Even when she would make dishes that could be called horrifying, her desires to keep trying to make ingredients would never waver. For Lisa, she just thought she needed it to accomplish her goals, and it appeared. Hopefully this isn't going to be some kind of trend, right? Bennett, the most unlucky adventurer who's always walking the line between life and death as well, went on an adventure. Bennett is actually so unlucky that he was abandoned as a baby. <laughs> Thankfully though, he was found by an adventurer when he was a baby that later died. Now the adventure that Bennett went on was actually probably the same one that the old man did to find him. Along the way, he hurt himself and was losing too much blood, but he didn't give up yet. When he reached the end, he found nothing there at all. Bennett didn't mind that there was nothing at the end of his adventure though because that's just part of the adventure. Finally, his tightly wound emotions came loose allowing his many injuries to rob him of his consciousness and he collapsed. When he reawakened though, he found that his wounds had been cauterized by a mysterious flame, stopping both the bleeding and the pain, his vision. Rosaria was actually a part of a bandit gang as a kid, and the elder who had taken her from the village of her birth and taught her how to kill wanted her to be free. Fleeing makes you a traitor, and traitors can only earn their freedom through victory in combat. So, the old bandit tossed Rosaria an old dagger and said, Well, come on then, kill me, and you can leave this place. I'm long in the tooth now, while you've got youth on your side. You can do this, can't you? Thus did the bandits lose an old member, and welcome a new one that very night. 
The bandits were reluctant to accept Rosaria at first, since she had slain one of their own, but they quickly had a change of heart after seeing the vision in her hand. It was a rainy day when Kaya got his vision. After the Luke had to kill their father, Kaya wasn't really happy about that. As you guys know, Kaya is a Conrian spy sent by his original father to complete his mission, having to decide who he would support if the two places ever went to war, the dad who abandoned him or the adopted father who accepted him with open arms. When his adopted father did die, he did feel rather free thinking about the ancient plot that his father had given him. But he also felt guilt for not helping Deluc with his grief, so he ended up telling Deluc everything about all his secrets. The brothers ended up clashing in Blade soon after, and for the first time ever, Kai felt like he was able to tell his true self with no lies attached. Bitterly cold and brittle elemental energy burst forth from the tip of his sword to meet Deluc's searing flames head on. The clash of crimson fire and azure ice created a sudden swirl of wind that stunned them both. This was the grim moment at which Kai's vision appeared. Razor had a shunned protagonist backstory. During a lightning storm, he got ambushed by an abyss mage. Can you imagine? It's a lightning storm. His wolf pack tried to save him, but were all defeated. In a rage at all his companions being hurt, Razor yelled Lupicol and got his vision, but it was too late and all of them had died. Shad doesn't remember the moment he received his vision, so we have no info on that. Not much is known about Tartaglia's vision as well, but his delusion was given to him by the Tsaritsa, who is the Cryo Archon. An interesting fact about the Water Archon though is that because of the Endora quest, we do know that the Water Archon can see everything through water, so she has spies everywhere. Eula was having doubts because of all the remarks she would receive due to her bloodline. Eula came under the protection of a long forgotten old Outrider, aka Amber's grandfather. From him, she learned an open mindedness and down to earth persistence that she had forgotten. Before grievance and vengeance, before clan and outsider, one must find oneself first. It would be Eula's very own gentle path of revenge when she did at last find it. There it appeared before her, her vision. So there was a boy that was deathly ill and no one could figure out how to cure him, so to cheer him up, Barbara decided to try and sing for the first time ever. The boy ended up falling asleep to Barbara's lovely voice. Barbara herself had sung till her throat was dry and her voice was so hoarse that she decided to lay down by the wall and fall asleep. The next morning, Barbara awoke to discover the boy's fever had come down. Perhaps it was because she had sung for him, or perhaps it had something to do with the vision which had mysteriously appeared right next to her. When Hu Tao's grandfather died, she became the 75th director of the funeral parlor at age 13. After the funeral, she went to Wu Wang Hill to go see him off. She searched wherever she could, but she actually couldn't find him. Exhausted after two days of searching and dealing with lone spirits who would clap and laugh at her, Hu Tao met an old woman who explained to her, that none of the Wuxiang funeral parlors ever linger there. Relief filled Hu Tao and she returned home from her journey. It was noon when Hu Tao arrived home. She climbed over the wall into the rear courtyard, went straight to her room, and unpacked her travel bag, with her food and water long gone, and the rest of her belongings unpacked. The bag she had taken for empty instead of contained a colorful vision. Just when had it arrived? For Mona, hers was passed down from her master, but what her master is, no one really knows right now. But to Mona, it is the only treasure that serves as evidence for her hanging out with her master. Chung Yun decided one day that he will become the greatest exorcist in Liyue, that he would control his yang energy and get rid of the world of all evil spirits. And apparently, that was all the resolve he needed for him to gain God's favor and get his vision. Surprisingly though, he got Cryo rather than Pyro, seeing as Pyro tends to give visions to every passionate person. Nothing is really said about Yan Fei and how she got her vision, Mostly that she just lives up to her own principles and that's good enough for the Pyro Archon. Yanfei believes in no structure without laws and what she wishes for is to live as one pleases without overstepping. Everyone in Liyue, Adeptus from Mortal protects it in their own way. One afternoon while doing her dandelion experiment, Sucrose failed to get a new transmutation to occur. Much to her disappointment however, the dandelion seed had once again burned to a crisp. But there was something new there. Lying there amidst the black dandelion seed was a vision. Because she was too curious, she didn't even pick up the vision though. She just kind of left it in the liquid. She just wanted to see more reactions between dandelion scenes and visions. For Noelle, it was after failing her seventh selection test. The test had really broken her down mentally because she had tried for ever to become a Knight of Thronius doing 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups, 100 squats. You know the normal routine. When she was at her lowest point, she saw acting Grandmaster Jean, who had been in charge of the selection process. And without thinking, Noah gave a precious night salute to Jean. Jean stopped in her tracks and returned the salute. After a moment of surprise, Noah gave a strange smile, clumsy but pure. 
And from that day forward, vision in hand, Noelle reaffirmed her belief. For Kaching, nothing is said about how she got her vision yet, but it does talk about how she tried to destroy it in her past, but later came on to accept it. It does make me curious though, for how her interaction will be in the future if she ever gets to meet the Electra Archon. Klee had been creating a bomb that was massive as her first project, and she ended up blowing up her small workshop sky high, leaving a mound of smoking ash. Instead of being disappointed with what happened, Klee was pleasantly surprised to see a flaming vision emerge from the ashes. Around the time Jean was promoted from the captain of her squad to master of the knights, a huge challenge stood before her. Fatui forced diplomatic pressure from within, as they always do. They were traitors, again, who were comrades of former inspector Arak. The former inspector, by the way, is the man who concealed the truth about the death of Deluc's father. Thankfully, Jean was able to fend off the external pressure with one hand and lead the knights to beat the Abyss Order with the other. At that moment, all seemed to go quiet as she felt the breeze flow through her hand, she received her vision. As far as we know, Deluc has always had a vision, but something a lot of players don't realize is, is that he also has the delusion that he got from his father. So just like Child, maybe we could have a boss fight with him in the future. Though I'm sure many players wouldn't want to fight him. 3,000 years ago, Ganyu answered the call of Morax, the Lord of Geo, aiding him in the Archon Wars. The first Liyue, Chi-Sing, would need support, and she took the task up as a matter of course, becoming the secretary. The moment she made that decision, a vision appeared at her hip, granting her the power to resonate with the world to a degree beyond her natural abilities. I think it's crazy that Ganyu could be in the Archon War without a vision. That really just shows how powerful she really is. Now onto one of our last few characters, Amber was always following in her grandfather's footsteps and even took up his post so she could understand why he left Mondstadt. Her grandfather had actually left nothing for her to find, even in his wordless departure. After discovering a book of fables, she realized that she shouldn't wait for the direction from someone else, but that she should be like the courageous birds that spread their wings and flew into the sky. Right as she realized this, a vision began to shine brightly at her hip. Diona's father was out hunting in a storm that lasted for three days, and for those three days he did not return. The weather was preventing search parties sent by the Knights of Favonius to find him. Soon the dread of loss began to hang over Diona like a shroud, and not wanting to wait anymore, Diona burst out of the door into the tempest, and the waters that stood in her path were frozen by some power she did not recognize. Using her tracking skills, she caught her father under a broken gorge. Now, there are more characters coming to Genshin Impact, but since they're not officially out yet, we can't really talk about them. Kazuo, I think, will have an awesome story for how he got his vision, probably involving the Electron Archon in some way, if I had to guess. Also, something I probably should know is that the Dendro Archon died during the Archon War, and now there is a super young Dendro Archon in his place, and with Mihilio changing the game into a 10-year plan instead of a 5, I think we'll probably get Dendro characters like Baizu and Yayo after Anazuma. Though maybe they'll surprise us, which would be pretty cool. Anyways, hopefully I didn't forget one of your favorite characters. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thanks.